The Russian army lost more than 8,000 soldiers in Ukraine during the week, this was said by the commander of the Ukrainian ground forces Oleksandr Pavlyuk. From April 28 to May 5, 8,110 Russian servicemen were destroyed. During this period, the enemy destroyed 1,106 military equipment, 96 tanks, 188 armored vehicles, 264 artillery systems, 7 RYAS, 14 air defense systems, 353 vehicles, 31 special equipment. It lost 23 missiles and 129 UAVs, Pavlyuk said earlier, he said that Russian Federation creates a 100,000 soldiers force grouping, and it is possible that in the summer the enemy will try to carry out an offensive in one of the directions, Russian plans are not fully clear to us. We only know the data they have, what they create. They create force grouping with more than 100,000 soldiers. It won't necessarily be an offensive. Perhaps they will replenish their units that are losing their combat capability, Pavlyuk said. The commander said that military partners in Europe well understood the consequences of the fall of Ukraine in the war, if we fail to keep the enemy in Ukraine, the next country will be the NATO country, he said, Pavlyuk said that invaders continue to conduct offensive operations on the front line and shell peaceful cities. The Russians have a new destructive weapon Draken, according to the Welt publication. I in recent weeks, a prototype of the new TOS-3 flamethrower system has appeared for the first time. Each Draken launcher is capable of launching missiles with thermobaric warheads of high destructive power. The publication writes that one volley can turn several blocks of the city into ruins. The new missile launcher can fire at a distance of up to 15 kilometers. It is created on the basis of existing TOS-1 and TOS-2 systems, which Russians are actively using in the war with Ukraine. Judging by the image, the TOS-3 will be based on a tank track chassis, like its predecessors TOS-1 and the TOS-1 Asolnsepek, while the launcher will be borrowed from the TOS-2 Tasachka, which has its own ammunition loading mechanism that facilitates reloading. Russians are actively using the TOS-1 Asolnsepek against the defense forces of Ukraine. This system is forced to approach very close to the front line due to the fact that its maximum range of fire is only 6 kilometers. Russians also use a wheeled version of the TOS-2 Tasachka MRL, which is made on the basis of a Ural 63706 truck with a 6x6 wheel arrangement. Unlike TOS-1 and TOS-1A that use tracked chassis of the T-72 or T-90 tanks respectively. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that his country is facing a new stage in the war amid Russia's plans to expand offensive. Zelensky made the remarks during a meeting with border guards in Khmelnytsky Oblast on May 3. We are now facing a new stage in the war. The occupier is preparing to expand its offensive. And all of us, Ukrainians, soldiers, state, partners, must do everything to disrupt Russia's offensive plan, Zelensky stressed. The Ukrainian leader added that his country will have to go through an extremely difficult and tough path in order to save people's lives and end the war on fair terms. Emphasizing the need to do everything possible to thwart the Russian plans, Zelensky said this applies not only to Ukrainians, but also to Western partners. We must prove that the occupier will not succeed in achieving its goals under any circumstances, no matter what it does and no matter how cruelly it acts. Ukraine will prevail anyway, the president added. Zelensky's remarks came amid a deteriorating situation on the battlefield. The chief of Ukraine's military intelligence, Kirill Obudinov, said that Ukraine should expect to face a renewed Russian offensive in late spring or early summer, with the offensive intensifying around eastern Donbass region. Meanwhile, Ukraine's ground forces commander Alexander Pavlyuk said Chesevyar, a town in eastern Donetsk region, remains one of Russia's key targets as it could facilitate further advances toward the nearby cities of Kostantinivka, Kramatorsk, and Slovyansk. In his words, Russia aims to completely occupy Donetsk, Luhansk, and, if possible, Zaporizhia region in 2024.
Kremlin concerned over Macron and Cameron's statements on Western troops and attacks on Russia. Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin's press secretary, has stated that the Kremlin was concerned about the latest statements by the French president and the UK foreign secretary regarding the possible presence of Western troops in Ukraine and UK weapons strikes on Russian Federation territory, calling them dangerous and escalating tension. Another extremely risky statement. We observe similar rhetorical escalation on the side of official representatives at the level of heads of state in France and at a more expert level in the United Kingdom, he added. The Kremlin spokesman stated that it was causing a direct escalation of tensions in the Ukraine conflict. He warned that this might pose a danger to European security, the entire architecture of European security. Here is a concerning trend of growing tensions in the official's statement that we kept track of. This makes us concerned, said Peskov. France's President Emmanuel Macron stated that he did not change his opinion on the deployment of Western troops in Ukraine. He considers such an approach correct and said that if the Russians break through the line of contact and Ukraine requests help, it is worth considering. UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron told Reuters that Ukraine has the right to use weapons provided by London to strike targets in Russia. Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Zidato has condemned the latest remarks from Emmanuel Macron about the option of sending troops to Ukraine and has warned such a move could ultimately spark an all-out nuclear war. Speaking to French broadcaster LCI, Zidato was asked for his take on Macron's renewed threat to deploy his country's troops to back up Kiev. The diplomat strongly condemned the idea, saying that the French leader's comments themselves have contributed to escalating the situation. If a NATO member commits ground troops, it will be a direct NATO-Russia confrontation and it will then be World War III, Shidato told the broadcaster.